Ah, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Burr, sir. And did you hear the news about good old General Mercer? No. You know Claremont Street? Yeah. They renamed it after him. The Mercer Legacy is secure. Sure. And all he had to do was die. Yeah, that's a lot less work. We ought to give it a try. <laughs> now, how you gonna get your debt plan through? I guess I'm gonna finally have to listen to you. Really? Talk less. Smile more. <laughs> Do whatever it takes to get my plan on the Congress floor. The Madison and Jefferson are merciless. Well, hate the sin, love the sinner. Hamilton. I'm sorry, Burr, I gotta go. But decisions are happening over dinner. Two Virginians and an immigrant walk into a room diametrically opposed foes. They emerged with a compromise, having open doors that were previously closed. Bros. The immigrant emerges with unprecedented financial power, a system he can shape however he wants. The Virginians emerge with the nation's capital. And here's the pièce de résistance. No one else was in the room where it happened, the room where it happened, the room where it happened. No one else was in the room where it happened, the room where it happened, the room where it happened. No one really knows how the game is played, the art of the trade, how the sausage gets made. We just assume that it happens, but no one else is in the room where it happens. Thomas Clay. Alexander was on Washington's doorstep one day in distress and disarray. Thomas Clay. Alexander said, I've nowhere else to turn. And basically begged me to join the fray. Thomas Clay. I approached Madison and said, I know you hate him, but let's hear what he has to say. Thomas Clay. Well, I arranged the meeting. I arranged the menu, the venue, the seating. But no one else was in the room where it happened. The room where it happened. The room where it happened. No one else was in the room where it happened. The room where it happened. The room where it happened. No one really knows how the parties get to yes. The pieces that are sacrificed in every game of chess. We just assume that it happens. But no one else is in the room where it happens. Meanwhile, Madison is grappling with the fact that not every issue can be settled by committee. Meanwhile, Congress is fighting over where to put the capital. <laughs> It isn't pretty. Then Jefferson approaches with the dinner and invite, and Madison responds with Virginian insight. Maybe we can solve one problem with another and win the victory for the Southerners. In other words, oh, oh. a quid pro quo. I suppose. Wouldn't you like to work a little closer to home? Actually, I would. Well, I propose the Potomac. And you'll provide him his vote. Well, we'll see how it goes. Let's go. No. What else was in the room where it happened? The room where it happened? The room where it happened? No one else has in the room where it happened to Alexander Hamilton. What did they say to you to get you to sell New York City down the river? Alexander Hamilton. Did Washington know about the dinner? Was the presidential pressure to deliver? Alexander Hamilton. Or did you know even then it doesn't matter where you put the U.S. capital? Because we all have the banks. We're in the same spot. You got more than you gave. And I wanted what I got. When you got skin in the game, you stay in the game. But you don't get a win unless you play in the game. Oh, you get love for it, you get hate for it, you get nothing if you wait for it, wait for it, wait. God help and forgive me. I wanna build something that's gonna outlive me. What do you want, Bert? What do you want, Bert? What do you stand for nothing, Bert? What do you fall for? I, I wanna be in the room where it happens, the room where it happens. I. Wanna be in the room where it happens, the room where it happens. I wanna be in the room where it happens. I wanna be in the room where it happens. Trade away. We dream of a brand new.